Seasonic, the heart of your system. I'm Leo Ward for Kit Guru here at the Azus booth at Nangang for Competex 2019. Very large booth, two booths actually. This is the regular Azus booth, that's the Azus ROG over there. It is heaving, it is noisy. Right behind me we have the Azus 30th anniversary laptop. We do not have pricing information, but it's going to be, get that guy out of it, brutally expensive. It's got a uh, hand-stitched leather, gold, ultra sleek, ultra slim, it's going to be absolute fortunes and it's limited edition. Having said that, Azus is only going to have one thirtieth anniversary, so what the heck, let's really go for it. So that looks absolutely mind-blowing, but we're never going to get our hands on one, I'm sure of that. We've had a few conversations already at Computex about four creators. This is the proof of it. Azus is getting into content creation, but every product over there we're told we are familiar with. It's just like a repurposing. Yeah, you've seen it. It's for creators, not for gamers. That's what that's all about. Wise marketing, but no new products. More 30th anniversary products. These are all edition 30 motherboards. So this is a Prime X299 edition 30, but it's exactly the same in terms of hardware as the regular Prime X299, except it's got its different aesthetic. Lots of white. The white on white means it's glaring like crazy. Aluminium, very sleek. Uh, X299 Deluxe 2, same again. X570 Pro is obviously brand new, being X570. Active chipset cooler, conventional hardware, aluminium heat sinks, all looking good. Then we have X570P. I've not come across a P product before. Apparently that means budget, entry level, P for price. But again, active cooler, dual graphics slots. You've got the expected hardware, clearly cut down on VRMs, but still fairly proper. And then Z390A, Z390 is still a thing, obviously. In fact, it's still mainstream. It's just very hard to remember Z390 exists when we're interested in X570. I quite like that. I have to say, I do like that. Strange but true. We know about Azus Prime, but this is Prime Utopia. Totally different. So it's a concept thing. And I've got no idea whether some or all of this is going to break cover at any point. So this is a representation of a motherboard. So that's the CPU and the memory. That is an LCD display. This is the I.O. panel. If we come round to the I.O. panel, we'll see it looks sleek and shiny and you've got modules that plug in. Coming around the full way to the back of the system, the graphics card is on the wrong side because of course the graphics card is hot and then we have a cooling system above. So it's been rebuilt. Now I had a discussion with Gordon from PC World about this when we were talking about ATX and other standards. This is what we were talking about. So that I.O. panel, we move along to the display. So this is the motherboard down flat. So we can see there ports and connectors, I.O. panel on this side, but the bits and pieces are in the next area. Here. This is the LCD display, which is, uh, reads out temperatures and such like. We understand that uh, the fact is modular is different. And here we have the I.O. panel. Now, we're not sure what we think about this yet, because the idea is I don't want so much USB. I want more Ethernet or vice versa. You pop out one module, you plug in the next. I like the idea in principle. So I've had enough of that the USB uh, type A. I want some type uh, C, thank you very much, for example. That can make perfect sense. But these modules clearly take up more space than the ports. You could typically get four USB in a stack, whereas there they got two. So in principle, it's very interesting. The question is what difference it will actually make in the real world if it ever hits uh, release. And we go from the bright white of the main Azus booth to the inky blackness of Azus ROG, where it's all dark. This is the ROG Swift PG27UQX, which is a subtle revision of the previous PG27UQ model, which includes now NVIDIA G-Sync Ultimate. That's a significant thing. The frame and such like, exactly the same as before. This is the world's ultimate 4K 27-inch display, but it was hellish expensive, like two grand is my recollection. The point here is this uh, G-Sync Ultimate uh, is an LED technology that means that they've extended the G-Sync range in terms of Hertz. It now runs higher up the clock range. 
Unfortunately, it's bound to increase the price of the monitor. So in principle, I'm interested, but frankly, this monitor at two grand was too much. Uh, more than two grand, even the new technology. Ouch. Available in July, we have this 43-inch monitor, ROG Swift XG 438Q. Uh, 120 hertz refresh. They're talking about a price that was around 1,100 US dollars. So it probably means about a thousand pounds. Might be 1,100 pounds. Looks interesting. Basically, big, high refresh. But we've had this before. Using a TV for gaming, bad idea when you're up close to it. A monitor such as this might do the trick. It's sort of it's betwixt and between a television and a PC monitor. Could be interesting, but I need to use that in proper lighting rather than this uh, booth to get an idea what that's like. The price, that's reasonable. Next up, ROG Swift PG27UQ, 27 inch 4K, 144 hertz. Good combination of features, and it's got G-Sync Ultimate. Don't have a price on that, that looks interesting, but that spec sounds good, and the better the specs sound with the Zeus, generally, the higher the price is. We saw ROG Theta Electret at the Sneak Peek event. That's this enormous headset here. It has noise cancelling technology both for the headset itself and also for the boom microphone, which is here. This is turning it around just. We do not have pricing of this headset, and that's starting to get disturbing. I don't know why they can't give an idea what the price is. This is a, a, a showcase for the drivers inside the headset. So near Dimmy Magnet for the subwoofer, as it says, electric driver for the high end. Quite large, very large headset. That's the reason why. Look at this. I mean, that's my thumb next to those drivers for scale. They're big. And over here, we've got more magnets. Again, my thumb for scale. That's a lot of hardware going in that headset. And then for a laugh, up here, we've got a light, a ROG light. Uh, fully RGB controlled, so you can either set it to the colour you choose or you can do the whole uh, light show fandango. I think last year we saw like a, an Azus logo uh, thing going on, hologram. This is an actual light. It's kind of in the Philips Hue sort of territory. Oh, it's got the logo in the top. I've just seen. I've just seen the logo in the top. There we go. So, yeah, once again, branded. And then over here we've got another light. They're saying it's interactive, but it's quite peculiar to see what you might think of as domestic products at a Zeus. Aura Creator is software. This is the software. It's an interface for your ecosystem. When you have a complete desk full of uh, Aura hardware, using the software, you can move the items physically around. So it's your ripple and wave effects, for example, ripple and wave correctly. So instead of going mouse, keyboard, headset, mouse or whatever it might be, which would obviously be a disaster, we can't have that. It has to know where the items physically are on your desk. So there you go, you can drag and drop the various items around to make sure your lighting works correctly. Obviously it's a little bit of fun, it's not particularly serious, and it's clearly designed for someone that has a whole suite of a Zeus Aura hardware. Some bright spark has put the display of X570 motherboards in a doorway under a speaker next to a display area with all the booth girls. It's an absolute nightmare. Come in close, Mel. So we've got photos, we'll put these on the page. Rob Crosshair 8 Hero, Wi-Fi Crosshair 8 Hero formula. Uh, active cooling on both you all. Note, Mini ITX, X570i Gaming. That looks interesting. A load of hardware going on there. Look at that VR, and looks like an active cooler there, which is gonna be for the chipset. Going across the Crosshair 8 Impact. What's that? I don't know what that card is. Memory is there. I don't know what that is. I'm guessing M.2s, but I don't know. I'll have to check my notes when I get back to base. Azus has a monumental number of products on show at their booths. Booths, plural. I am surprised how few of them have prices. Almost nothing, in fact, has prices. But still, loads of products, apparently all coming very soon. We just need further details, then we need to get on with the reviews. Loads of good stuff to see. I'm Neil Order for Kit Guru. This is basically all Azus. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, hit the bell button, return to Kit Guru during this week for more Computex videos.